Dear Diary. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing already. <laughs> the H-A-D. And then I slapped him around the face. I know you're being bullied at school and I know that things are bad, but remember, get a printer tomorrow. Distinct lack of imagination. <sighs> Hello. If I was going to name the stages of lockdown, we'd have the chaotic foraging and cooking in the face of impending apocalypse phase. We'd have the read everything and pretend you're in a different apocalypse phase. We'd have the literally wear all of your clothes because seasons no longer exist phase. And this, my friends, is the grandpa bucket phase. I thought we'd tuck ourselves up with a blanket. Yes, in a crisis I am hibernating in a cottage because I am the lead character in the holiday. And I thought we could read my teenage diary. Top secret, no more. I did a video like this, just dipping into some of my teenage diaries a while ago. And um, I have a few. One, two, oh, this is like a shame haul. <laughs> Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 20, 21. We're still going, 22. 20, oh shit, we're, not, we're never gonna know what's in this one, guys. That is hardware you can't fuck with. 28, 29. There's something incredibly endearing, but at once incredibly narcissistic about how much I want to document my life and my teenage years. But since then I have had a lot of requests to do more of a deep dive, but I thought I'd pick my 2001 diary because it is almost exactly 20 years since I wrote it. And I thought we could all have a giggle at my expense. I'm gonna need a sip of tea for this. Get the Yorkshire gold down you, you'll need it. Now I'm not sure exactly what I was trying to accomplish with these diaries. And at first I was looking forward to rereading them because I thought it would answer a lot of questions I had. It actually left me <laughs> with more questions than answers, you'll see. But I'm gonna be chatting about in the middle of the video about our ethereal overlord Skillshare, uh, where I've been learning how to journal better. While at the age of 11, which is what I was when I wrote this, you don't really have a good idea of who you are. I definitely think I could have included more points of interest <laughs> in this and actually made it more therapeutic. I actually kind of think I stressed myself out trying to record my life as it was happening, like some kind of war reporter, um, rather than making journaling something like a healthy exercise. We're gonna talk more about that later. Let's start off with the first page, shall we? <laughs> Let's start at the very beginning. An awful place to start. July the 11th, 2001. It was a Wednesday. Dear diary. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing already. <laughs> right, this is my new diary. I have had others, but they only lasted for a week or so. This time I'm determined to keep it going. Today was stepping up day. That's when everybody gets to go to the next class they will be in in September. On the way to school, we collected, let's call him Martin, shall we? Martin is lanky and to be honest, a bit of an outlaw. Could be a geek or a weirdo. Gave me a mint. V nice, the mint. <laughs> Not Martin. <laughs> what you'll learn from these story diaries is that um, I'm not a very nice person. <laughs> or at least I wasn't. Or I think also there's like a kind of power thing where I wanted to assert myself in the diary and show that I wasn't just a pushover and like tap, you know, give, give people hot takes on people I encountered in my life. Even if I don't really remember these people or, or at the time remember that I didn't like them. Mr. Bright rambled on for ages about the obvious and anything else he could think of to make him sound interesting or boring if you look at it from everyone else's perspective. He's not a very good speaker. <laughs> this is why I identified a lot more with Tracy Beaker than I did with like nice characters like um, <laughs> Anne of Green Gables or I don't know, somebody more wholesome. I definitely felt very Tracy Beaker at this point. Um, when he told us to pray, I quietly prayed that Mr. Bright became interesting overnight, or that he's old enough to retire. <laughs> After assembly, we were shown our tutor room by our guides. It was literally a big shed. <laughs> Midlands funding of comprehensives, what can I say? I pictured a colourful classroom with carpets and curtains and pictures on the walls. No such luck. A plain room with grey floors, walls and tables, distinct lack of imagination. A lot of my classes took place in these, what they literally called temporary huts. They were like, wooden constructions that were elevated slightly from the ground on just like breeze blocks. And then underneath there were like literal families of rats that lived there. <laughs> and it was so gross. We used to like kick the football underneath and then like it would hit a rat and then the rats would come out the other side. <laughs> 
There was also like water coming from the ceilings. I think that school is better funded now, but at the time. I also remember like watching high school shows in the US at this time and being so confused and that also influencing how I saw my own school because they're all so rich on those shows and all the schools are so beautiful. And I remember getting to secondary school and realizing we didn't get lockers and we had to just carry our bags around all day with like five, six books in it. And I was like, <gasps> I felt cheated. I literally document every lesson that day, but I'm not gonna put you through that. 12th of July, 2001. Dear diary, I'm writing to you in my metallic gel pen, purple. I swapped it with Sarah for my green glitter gel pen. I was a bit reluctant at first, but she threw in silver as well, so I gave in. She said we could swap back whenever we want. Then <laughs> my handwriting starts to fade, and I'm like, it's a bit faulty, I've just noticed. You scammed me, Ra. I enjoy writing in this diary now. It's like writing to a friend or a twin. I wish I was a twin. You could talk about stuff like clothes and boys and periods and books and music and school, tons of stuff. I can't talk to Andrew, that's my brother, about any of that. I wonder if anyone else I know has a diary. I feel like I should give it a name, like Anne Frank. Kitty, maybe? I also like, like to tell her what colors I'm writing in. Dear diary, I'm writing in pink because I feel like it and I can't find my biro. Okay, so it's now the summer because we just had like a trial day at secondary school and I'm on this thing called, prepare yourself, church family holiday. So it's basically this thing where everybody at my church used to rent a field in Cornwall and we'd all bring our tents and like caravans and whatever and take over the whole field and then everybody's kids would just like run wild for weeks in the summer and like nobody would really know whose kids were where and everyone would just eat in each other's caravans and it was you know, do you know what I mean in, in some ways it was socialist utopia it might be strange to some of you but that's literally what a lot of my holidays consisted of and it was like super cheap there were obviously like a lot of kids my age there so I used to just hang around with them and we'd like go to the shops or like walk to the beach or come up with schemes and stuff. We're all like 11 so we don't really know what we're doing with our lives. Last night, me, Jen, Ra, Sam and Jason played dares and talked. It was cool, but when my dad came to tell me to go to bed, he pretended he was a ghost. <laughs> so this is my dad got like one of those really old like gas lanterns and we were all like sitting in this tent playing dares. I'm sure the dares were like, pull my toe, <laughs> kind of level, whatever. And he snuck around the back of the tent and made like really creepy sounds and everyone absolutely shat themselves. <laughs> right now, very funny, would probably do the same in his position. At the time, mortified. Mum said I might get a mob. Cool, yes, fat, <laughs> P-H-A-D, wick, <laughs> W-I-K. We were also just like quite physical, like we still had like actual fights. We had like wrestling matches. <laughs> Last night, Jen and me slept in my tent. Before that, everyone had a huge wrestling match. I managed to get quite a few people down. Okay, so I'll spare you all the details, but essentially I get through the summer and I start school. And I often think like I had a really nice time at school and I did, but I'd forgotten this phase in year seven where I just didn't feel like I fitted anywhere and I was really insecure. So I was in this group of girls, but basically I wasn't the coolest one there. Do you know what I mean? Like it was a cool, they were like quite popular, but I was definitely like the fish at the bottom of the barrel. I hate school. One, the lessons, boring, although yesterday it was drama and we did an airline with a 10 hour delayed fly flight. Everyone said I was a brilliant stroppy customer. <laughs> my debut. Two, the friends. They're all okay really, but the jokes they make at me aren't really fully en funny anymore. Then I list the names of the girls. I feel like they're really leaving me out. I think deep down, Stacey doesn't like me. Jacindra finds me dull and Katie finds me annoying. Although they try to cover it up, they're always dropping hints and I'm not stupid. But I like them really, even though sometimes they're a bit two-faced and annoying. Who would I hang around with though? Then I talk about how I don't know who I'd hang around with and I feel really left out. Thought I'd bring you a bit closer and getting in on the action. <laughs> Cause the good bit's coming up. Ooh, cliffhanger I know. Now just while you shake it off, take a little break, walk around the room, have a wee. I'm gonna tell you about a little special offer from our ethereal overlords in the sky, Skillshare. 
I'm mainly doing this to catch the eye of any time travellers that might be in the audience and might be able to go back and pass this wisdom on to Mini Lena. But if you're not a time traveller and you are still watching, that's fine. I guess you can stick around and get the free thing too. Skillshare has thousands of classes on art, essay writing, poetry, activism, freelancing, self-reflection, all of which I'm sure my 11 year old self would have benefited from. But particularly I'm thinking about Yasmin Cheyenne's class on writing for self-discovery. I took it a couple of weeks ago and it's a very calming, accessible class that teaches you how to journal effectively. So rather than just reporting the fact, 8.35 a.m. had a maths test, crushed on a boy. The class shows you how to look inwards, work out what your desires are, and just get a little bit of a firmer grip on what is actually going on with you. I wish I knew more about what's going on with Mini Lena because I just don't understand it sometimes. It's got pie charts, it's got a downloadable workbook, and it's even got a section about writing a letter to your younger self, which I did, and it was incredibly helpful. Most classes are under an hour. Not that many of us have anywhere to be, but my attention span is dwindling. I don't know about yours, so they're in bite-sized chunks, so it can fit with any schedule or endurance level. There's a community of literally millions on there, so you're never alone, and it is less than $10 for an annual subscription. Plus, I feel absolutely bloody lovely about telling you about some learning. It lasts a lifetime, doesn't come wrapped in plastic, and it doesn't need to be shipped to you. Whoop, whoop. As you know, I really appreciate you sticking around for these little sponsored segments. So I obviously was gonna make sure there was something in it for you. Those of you who've been around a long time, you know what's coming, so get below, get below. The first thousand people to use the link in the description are gonna get an absolutely free trial of Skillshare Premium. So if you've never kept a diary or a journal, or you think that maybe you're journaling, <laughs> skills could use some polishing or you're just looking to learn any kind of new skill that link is waiting for you but don't snooze on it too long because there's some pretty people with some pretty nifty fingers around here so you might want to <laughs> let's get back to the scandal i use the word scandal incredibly loosely <laughs> this whole teenage health and hygiene thing is really confusing me <laughs> Something's never changed. I think I've got hygiene sus, apart from the wash every day. How do people find the time every day? What am I even doing? What's my schedule full of? I'm 11. Every two will do for me, I hope. I'll time myself next time to see how early I would have to get up. 7 a.m. is early enough for me. Health is hard. I do exercise okay. But did you know that it takes you half an hour of walking or jogging or swimming one hour? to work off one bag of crisps or one chocolate bar. I'd never do that. Tired now, bye. <laughs> it's sometimes the lack of progress that's quite grounding. <laughs> okay, so this is where it gets a bit sad. I didn't realize until this, at what a young age, I started like freaking out about my body and wanting to change it. So there's a drawing here of me, like a before and after fantasy drawing of me wanting to lose weight. Again, still 11, 24th of January. Today I shaved for the first time. It was only under my arms, but it felt much better. I felt a bit dick. That means fat in German. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't laugh. If I lost half a stone, it would make the world of difference. Oh well, just have to accept yourself. I'm listening to Now 50, disc one, numbers 21 and 22. P.S. My favorite song is You're My Number One by S Club 7. <laughs> so weird to see me drawing diagrams of the fact that I wanted to lose weight. I don't even know what I'd seen at that point. I guess it was like the Britney belly had already got, got to me. I just I didn't have a chance. Okay, this is when I get into a fight with a boy. I was at like this kind of community party thing. Let's call him Tom. Me and Donna were in the crash, chilling, and Tom was mooching about as usual. Suddenly, Stacy started crying. Stacey was a young girl that I knew. She was, I think she probably she was about six or seven at this point. Uh, we asked her what was wrong and she said that Tom had kicked her on purpose. This was not fair. I asked him why he did it. Suddenly without warning, with a roar of I didn't, he threw himself at me, hitting me and trying to trip me up. Automatically I stood my ground and dug my heels in hard. He was always trying to trip me up at school. I pushed him back and he told me to get lost. He wouldn't. He followed me in circles around the crash, kicking me. I kicked him back. Suddenly, he tripped me up and had me on the floor. This is when I read this book, it really appalled me. He got me round the neck and asked me if I wanted my nose broken. No thanks, I said. He, for some reason, let me get, let me get up 
and then I slapped him around the face and then my dad came in just in time. I hate Tom. No commentary on that violence or the state of the situation. Absolutely nothing. I end the diary entry with song of the day, wake me up by girl thing. <laughs> it's just amazing like what you forget, isn't it? And also like, you know, I'm 11. Maybe I started the fight worse. Anyway, all we need to know is mini Lena was a bit of a Spinelli. This is quite sweet. I'm tired, but I can't sleep. When I'm older, I desperately want to be an actor or an author, or maybe if I don't get that, I could illustrate for books. Four books. Normal day to day. Katie was leaving me out big time. I didn't want to talk about it at the moment because it's just getting me down. I'm not talking to Katie. I just get left out a lot in like year seven. It was really sad. Anyway, be happy, okay? That's what I'm telling myself. New printer, can't wait. I'm <laughs> just like, look, I know, you, I know you're being bullied at school and I know that things are bad, but remember, get a printer tomorrow. <laughs> To be fair, I'd still be excited about that now. I don't own a printer. Can't wait to get an email address. <laughs> and then I'm practicing like what I might call my email address because I obviously don't understand email addresses yet. <laughs> Nor does anybody at this point in time, in my defense. I have a whole list of possible email addresses that I'd like. cat.cool.net, kitkat slash wham.com, smile by k.com, sheep care for free, sweetpea.net, Tammy dot for free, <laughs> purple slash net, Kathleen dot com. P.S. Mum said I could have my ear done up up top. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I know she never actually did. You conned me, Mum. It's fine. I've done it now. I've done it now. 9th of February 2002. Today was good. I bought got proper baggy jeans at last. There's a picture. <laughs> I love them. Basically you weren't cool unless your jeans were completely dragging on the floor and would absorb all the rainwater up to your knees. Watch the final episode of Pop Idol. Will won. Gareth, other possibility, is gorgeous. For Lent, I've decided to give up biscuits. It will be hard, but I have to get slim. You can still eat cakes. <laughs> It's not how it works, Lena. <laughs> I just make these random references the whole way through about how I really need to get slim. I don't say thin, I say slim, but still. Here's another one. P.S. I'm getting really chubby now and I hate it. Giving up biscuits for Lent for definite. <laughs> this is so relatable and so interesting that I was going through this at the time. Dear diary, the last couple of days has been really frustrating for me. I'm so rubbish at P.E. I mean, all my mates are brilliant at it and I'm wondering why I bother going to football anymore. Yesterday was P.E. And I was amazed how exhausted, wet and sticky I felt after one netball match. I know I've always been a bit clumsy with my feet, but I thought I was okay on my hands. I was so annoyed and frustrated with myself. I had a little cry when I got home. It was also about the left out thing. I was bulging with exhaustion by bedtime and I had a headache and a stomach cramp. I'm just so sad about the fact that I'm not good at sports and that all of my friends were into it at the time and I just really felt like the kind of last one. Dear Diary, just a PS to last night. I might get a personal CD player. At the Mo, I've got 26 pounds. And in Curry's, they're only 17 pounds. Hopefully going shopping today. See ya, breakfast calls me. And I've like drawn the CD player. <laughs> 30th of March, 2002, 8.35, sitting room. Dear Diary, am I fat or am I just on the chubby side? Andrew told me I'm fat. I'm getting a bit flab tummied and my double chin is back. I've always thought I look vaguely pretty without it. I don't know what to do now, although the holidays are for relaxing. You had the answer all along here, Lena. The holidays are for relaxing. Oh good, I got my portable CD player. P.S. I got my portable CD player today. It's so cool. Okay, let's end on a happy note. It's the Easter holidays. I'm on holiday in Wales. Today, I started to get into the swing of things. I'm unwinding, and by the looks of it, so are my family. Yesterday, mum and dad dragged, dragged us up a hill in the ice cold wind and the temperature of minus 100. <laughs> Yesterday, I also felt fat and ugly, fed up and bored, but today I felt I, like I accept myself and I'm in a creative and happy mood. This morning, I did a painting of mum stood by the wall looking out at the view from the window. And then we went for a walk and took loads of pictures of lambs. They are so cute. I used to fill up these disposable cameras full of pictures of sheep. I have no explanation for it. I still have boxes of these just pictures of sheep in my house that I don't. And it's funny as well because there's no actual 
There's, there's not like one static sharp picture of a sheep. It, they're just more like white blurs because I'm taking the pictures as I'm chasing them. <laughs> so it's just this like collection of like smears of sheep running away from me as me at 11 chasing after sheep with my disposable camera like Rah! only an echo of the normal things to come dear diary I, I like the fact that i am getting happier in this and i didn't purposely do that for like a nice story arc for the video i think i am just slowly finding my feet in the world wow i just had the most amazing dream i went on hand gliding only much faster and i wasn't steering and there was a plane behind me and wow it was really vivid strapping all the straps starting up the plane and whizzing through the air like an eagle. It was so cool. I went up three times over forests and streams and mountains. Everyone was there, although they were all on quad bikes. <laughs> and then I've like put two boys that I fancy at school were there. How weird is that? Not weird at all, Lena. That's your subconscious. When I'm down, I look back on this day and smile. It was pure bliss. Love, Kathy. That, dear reader, was my diary. I think it strikes me like how I kind of do have the same tone of voice that I have now, but also just like that kind of weird age where you're not quite a teenager and you kind of are a child, but you're also like really aware of yourself and you're kind of like floating above yourself. And I don't really know what my motivation was for writing all that down. I thought that, I think that I thought that it wasn't important, but if I wrote it down, then it would become important. And nothing inherently in this diary is that important, like in the grand scale of things. And I think by me trying to write down what was happening to me, like the facts about my life, I was trying to work out how I was doing. It's this like, this, very human but like impossible need to have a bird's eye view of your experiences as you're having them that I've since realized isn't really possible. I do have a, a kind of notebook journal now and I've been obviously with Skillshare stuff like practicing the way I record how I'm feeling because I, I feel like what's kind of sad but kind of beautiful is that this diary has very little use for me now. I don't think I'm as fascinated by my younger self as my younger self believed I would be <laughs> at 11. I found, I thought my life was incredibly interesting. <laughs> I also think we over romanticize our lives and remember stuff like, I'm like, oh, when I was at school and I had nothing to worry about and things were just so easy and food was on the table and, but like, I still worried about my weight. I still worried about fitting in. And there's so much stuff that I've like grown from. We've come so far, Lena, but I'm still the same twat deep down. And there's something incredibly reassuring about that, if not a little sobering. Um, I'd love to know if you guys keep a diary. And if so, please tell me something cringy that you said to them so I don't feel so publicly mortified. But in between the serious videos that I'm gonna be uploading in the next few weeks, I thought we could have a little bit of silliness uh, in that. I think next week's video is gonna be some medicine. So please consider this the sugar. Wherever you are in the world, if you're still in lockdown, I'm sending my thoughts your way. <laughs> I think however mundane your experiences are, they do matter and it's important that you take them seriously, even if you don't end up writing them down minute by minute in this diary. And forgive yourself for not having an overview of your life right now because it's just not possible. You always wanna fly over your life and have a little check out, try and notice the patterns. But this, if anything, is a reminder that that's not always entirely possible and that's okay. Don't forget to hit that Skillshare link if you don't wanna miss out on the free journaling tutorials. Yeah, <laughs> I'm losing it. Please, please let me out of this house. Boris, you've forgotten about me. <laughs> and until next time, frogs not out.